gonna stop. Welcome, friends. It's your man, Z, and we're going to talk a little bit about Netflix and what's going on with Netflix. Big trouble in little Netflix. Netflix world has been turned upside down. as stock plunge is 35%. CNN Business, thank you, CNN, the least watched news network in television. But we're going to dive into it a little bit. Now, for those of you who did not hear, Netflix got smashed the other day they lost approximately 50 billion dollars worth of value in their stock the shares dropped 35 percent the stocks lost 40 percent year to date so a terrible 2022 has now become disastrous what can they do they lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2022 not to mention the 700,000 that they had to cut because of the war with Russia. So now 200,000 of 221 million global subscriptions doesn't seem like a lot, but they had been projecting that they would add 2.5 million new users in the first three months. And this is the first time in 10 years that they've lost any subscribers. That's starting to look bad for them. So as we saw here, the pulling out of Russia alone cost the company 700,000 subscribers. This is all very crazy. It's very crazy. It's not very good. Now, one of the other things that I was thinking about is, you know, what does this mean for customers? Well, one of the things that they're going after is people sharing passwords. They think that they need to clamp down on password sharing that's where they think they're losing things i think that's just an easy way to piss off fans now one person who came out to say something about this was elon musk and i'm gonna get his direct quote here elon musk let's see what musk had to say elon musk is saying the Netflix is losing subscribers because woke mind virus is making it unwatchable. Now, I don't necessarily agree 100% with that. Now, we have had videos. We did a little bit of a special about cuties right up here, which people had a lot of problems with, us included. But what you may also have is maybe they just don't have good material. Is that possible? I mean, we watched The Atom Project. It was all right. It's okay movie. Red Notice. Pretty forgettable movie. I mean, their movies just aren't that interesting. Right? Their series, they clearly have much better series. Stranger Things, not too bad. You know. But overall, like... And, and don't get me wrong. They are the giant of the streaming grounds. But what exactly are you going to come back for? And then when they... You know, as Elon Musk, now he didn't necessarily say, necessarily say, he was replying to someone else that said that wokeness is the problem. And he said, true. And he said he just wants them to make sci fi and fantasy that is at least mostly about sci fi and fantasy. I don't disagree with that. Amazon seems to be going down the same path with their Lord of the Rings. You've had us rant quite a bit about Lord of the Rings. One of the things that I'm looking at in particular is Netflix is slashing their animation studios. And one thing I do like about Netflix, and, and maybe I should make it a distinction here, is I like their anime department. Maybe not so much their animation. So what does that mean? And that means that you're gonna have to pay more for Coco Melon, because Coco Melon's like the number one show ever for Netflix. It's like a little kid show that I don't understand. But uh, they've already had some casualties as they decide to go through. You know, they're going to make some cuts because their stock did bad. I think that's always a bad move from corporate America. When you blame employees 
Um, now, you can blame employees, but when you cut employees or cut projects or cut things like that as a reactionary move because your stock price fell, that's a bad move, especially when you've been highly successful for a long time. But it doesn't seem to matter. So Netflix already let go of their head of creative leadership and development for original animation, Phil Reinda. He's gone with several of his staff and now several high-profile Netflix animated series have been canceled. Bone, which I have no idea what that is. Uh, the critically acclaimed comic, for, comic from Jeff Smith is being canceled. Never heard anything about that. Didn't know what it was. Uh, Raul Dahl's The Twits has been canceled. Okay. Uh, Laura Foss's Toil and Trouble. I don't know what any of those shows are, but they've all been canceled. And we want Netflix to be the home of everybody's favorite show. We want to make what our audience wants to see, but at the same time, they're getting rid of it. Uh, and what's here's one thing that is fascinating, because I know How to Train Your Dragons is on there, and that was a very popular show. But Boss Baby, also a popular show, is touted as the pinnacle of how animation should perform on Netflix, Except it isn't owned by Netflix at all. It's licensed from DreamWorks, just like Voltron, which they just lost the title to, to Amazon. So when you start sourcing out material, you're going to have trouble with this. So getting their animation studio, I guess it's just easy to first cut animation and just chop it. So interesting interesting little twist here that they go you know what's the easiest thing for them to cut head on right off the bat animation just chop it let it go now i'm not sad to see anything of these things go i am like i said i like their their anime but what does this mean for netflix going forward you know does this put a uh have their armor has some holes in it can they be exploited will someone else step up can amazon prime which does not put out enough material does disney plus which has pretty poor material itself it's interesting all these streaming channels dumping all of this money and not really coming up with high quality programming what do you think are you excited about any of this <laughs> like do you think that netflix can pull itself out of a tailspin i definitely think it can several people predicted that this is the beginning of the like downfall of netflix i don't believe that i think that they have the highest quality like layout and plans and, and they've been doing it longer than anybody else and it's going to be very hard for anyone to come and defeat that because if you look at like hbo max and all this other, they're so far behind they don't know how to recommend their own shows one thing netflix has thought about which maybe we should consider is uh whether or not they're going to have ads and are you okay with that if they have different tiered plans i think their first mistake was jacking up their prices which pissed off a lot of people you jack up your prices and you're competing with a lot of other things out there. People haven't 100% cut cable yet. Some people have, but not everybody. And Netflix is something that if you don't make yourself valuable to people, you're not they're not going to watch it. So, it's a easy $15 a month that they they could get rid of, you know. Makes sense to a lot of people to do that. So, what I think is uh, maybe a viable solution, although I think Hulu, the Hulu model is pretty much a failure as well is to have it with ads but i think tiers might be okay they're talking about having different tiers where they have a an ad supported model and then a non-ad supported model where maybe you pay eight bucks a month and you get ads i don't know would you still be willing to pay for netflix if they charged you if they dropped your price but gave you ads how do you feel about it are you are you interested do you want to save a couple bucks a month or would you rather have no ads whatsoever let me know in the comments below because I'm really curious. I don't exactly know how I feel about it because I think this is a really tough choice, especially when it comes to finances, right? You know, what is Netflix worth to you in the long run? So let us know down in the chat. Like and subscribe. Rumble us. Do all those fancy things. Uh, let us know what you're thinking because we want to know. We want to have a discussion. It's important. This is important, right? Especially in the entertainment sphere. Catch our live... Uh, we do a live audio podcast. You can catch it at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. Come join the party. Otherwise, catch the same podcast for free anywhere you get podcasts. You can get it from Apple iTunes. You can get it from Spotify, Stitcher, all those really great places. And uh, as for me, 
I'm already on. Exit stage, guys. To the next one. Later.